I welcome everybody to follow this man and the mindset messages that come out. Thank you for joining us at Nothing But The Truth, Bashar. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you uh, both for having me. It's uh, uh, you don't um, you don't get uh, you know contacted by attorneys every now and then. Usually, it's 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 not for good, right? <laughs> but uh, to be on a podcast, that definitely was uh, uh, you know an honor being on this uh, podcast. So thank you. Of course, of course. So, Bashar, let, you know, you, you are so prolific in what you do. Like Dave said, you have so many followers. We know there's a reason. We're looking at your story here. Um, but one thing we love talking about is that usually we find common themes with really successful folks like yourself. And part of that is that it always wasn't easy. There was a process that got you, got you where you're going. So can you give us a little understanding of who you are and where you came from and how you got to where you're at? So, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of take us back a little bit. Um for me, it started when I was uh, probably about four or five years old. Uh, my father was a, a, a successful entrepreneur in Iraq. That's where I'm originally from. And um, he actually owned the second largest uh, factory of clothing in Iraq. And um, as I was growing up and became, you know, my conscious actually started growing, I realized that I really wanted to be like him. He was very well respected in the community. He, to me, he was like a mover, a shaker. People came to him for advice or money or both. Um, and, uh, you know, I always aspired to be like him. Uh, he used to travel. Uh, he would go to, um, to, to Spain and Germany and Thailand to uh, buy cloth and material for his factory. And so just that whole, um, I guess that whole, um, uh, uh, not experience, but just what he was all about was very inspiring to me. And um, and then around the age of about 13, um, the war on Iraq happened in 2003, and we were forced out of there. So prior to that, in 91, um, he went from a complete, like a, a, a multimillionaire to uh, uh, pretty much worth nothing overnight uh, because of the, 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 uh, the, the specific um, uh, restrictions that were set on the Iraqi government. So the Iraqi dinar used to be one dinar used to equal three U.S. dollars, and literally overnight went to one U.S. dollar to equal twelve hundred dinars. Mm, wow. And so he went from like a, again a multimillionaire to nothing overnight, and um, and that destroyed him. After the the, the Iraqi war uh, um, in two thousand and three, we pretty much got forced out of the country. We had to flee Iraq in two thousand and six, and. At that point, he didn't have any money, but he had properties. And so what happened was that he left all of his properties back home because he couldn't liquidate, he couldn't do anything. And that's when we migrated to America, uh, in fact, to Detroit on 06, 06, 06. Right. So, so first of all, that had to be very traumatic, obviously, on the family yourself. How did that... How did that change your mindset in terms of when you got to America, what it is that you aspired to do? Um... It was the first time in my life that I now had the chance to um, to look into the future and be able to um, dream. Because up until now, especially, I mean, I'm 13 uh, in 2003, and imagine living for three, four years where you are simply, you don't know if you're going to go to sleep tonight, whether or not you're going to wake up tomorrow morning. Um, you don't know whether or not, uh, you know, uh, a missile being launched or a rocket being launched next to your house, if it's going to fall in your living room or your neighbor's living room or what's going to happen. And so we lived that kind of life for, for many years. And we didn't have the, um, we didn't have the, the um, we didn't have the, I guess, the bandwidth to even think of the future, you know, a uh, uh, year, five years, 10 years, 20 years. So when I came to America, it was the first time in my life that I could actually see that there were opportunities, that there was place for me to create whatever future that I wanted uh, in my life. And to me, that was very freeing. Um, and with that said, I think this is kind of one of the reasons why like immigrants, uh, at least from what I know, do very well in this country, especially because where we come from, there are just simply no opportunities. There's no room for you to do anything. And the fact that you can come to this country and do anything that you want, um, obviously, as, as long as you uh, you follow the law, um, it, it's just an incredible uh, thing that I think many people have just become very um, very numb to it. You know, mm. especially those that were 
born and raised here and i know from my race as well um it's a different mentality between those that came uh, as a you know as a kind of a immigrants to those that say their parents or grandparents migrated to the country 30 40 years ago and they were born here the mentality is completely different the the hunger is completely different you know they kind of get accustomed to this is the normal thing that i'm expecting every single day where they don't have the mindset or the mentality of like this these are things that you did not have before and now i have them let me be grateful for what i have and let me try to to make the most out of it wow so when when you get to detroit and you now have this vision you have opportunity in front of you how did you take advantage of that how did you get to the next step from there uh well very first obstacle that i had was i didn't speak english uh so this was the very first thing that i had to overcome um so i english became learning english became the the kind of a mission of my life and so i took the first uh six months to learn anything and everything about english that i that i you know that i could could put my hands on uh so what i would do is i started summer school i um would every day in school any new word that i didn't know which at the time were, were many i would write you know in a notebook and i would grab the 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 uh the uh, definition in, in, in Arabic put in a sentence at the end of each week there was about three four five hundred new words that I had learned put them all in sentences and then each week I would go back and, and, and review and make sure that I knew exactly what that word meant so that was my first mission the second thing was I was 16 at the time it was just my myself my mother and my older brother and now I had to navigate through what does it mean to be in this country what does it mean you know who do i now become now i'm a teenager going to school um you know getting to uh, to meet people um getting to create uh, kind of like a tribe and, and and friends and so on and so now i had to navigate through kind of i guess fitting in right um at that time styles of the way that you dress the way you do your hair all that stuff was completely different especially in detroit and and the middle east right and so that was another obstacle. Uh, I would, you know, I would get bullied a lot in school. Uh, kids in school would would make fun of how my hair was, how I dressed, and so on. So I was navigating through all those things. I started, uh, uh, you know, creating a liking in a girl that I didn't even know how to communicate uh, what I was feeling to her, and so that was kind of another thing. But once I was able to kind of overcome these obstacles, now I realized that you know I have the rest of my life ahead of me, and that now I could become whatever I wanted and around the time my mom um, sold me on the idea that if I wanted to become successful in this country I should go to school I should uh, get a degree and I should uh, uh, for her it was a doctor my sister is actually a lawyer and uh, uh, she wanted a, a doctor and a lawyer in the house so she can brag to her sisters and her friends but uh, you know after um, going to school for a few years I just uh, realized that it wasn't for me and that my true dream was become an entrepreneur because I had aspired to do so since I was a little kid, and um, and that uh, kind of started around uh, you know nineteen twenty years old, and and that brought a whole set of uh, obstacles itself. Did you go to college? Did you have a certain period of time in college? Yeah, so I um, I actually graduated from high school a semester early so I can start college so that way I could um, you know do my prerequisites and go to uh, medical school but um, there was a period of time where I thought that I was um, that two things uh, and this this comes to labeling and we can talk about that if you guys want but I see a lot of people labeling themselves putting specific labels on themselves such as I'm a procrastinator such as I'm lazy such as you know um, I am unfocused because those are those were all things that I started experiencing. Um, I would be sitting in a library with a book open, trying to study for an exam that I should have studied for a month ago. The exam is tomorrow. A fly would go by a mile away, and I would turn around, and I just could not find myself to focus. Over the years, what I realized is that I wasn't unfocused. I wasn't a procrastinator. I was not lazy. I was just uninspired. The thing that I was doing was not inspiring me was not creating enough leverage in my life so that I can create change 
And that's the thing that I see a lot of people nowadays struggle with, and then they get labeled, whether if it's by a professional, whether if it's by their parents, whether if that by their peers. And then now they have this label on themselves, and it, all it is, it's shackles around you that are holding you back from your from the next thing in your life, from your max potential, right? Because now you're walking around <laughs> thinking that you're this thing because all of your life, society has been labeling you that thing, and now you are missing out on opportunities because every time you see an opportunity, that label comes into place and you can't move forward. Wow, that, that's uh, really an amazing insight. All right, guys, we're going to have to take a break. Um, we're definitely going to pick up on the other end because you can obviously see we're going to get to uh, speaking to what how his successes came about. Uh, obviously, a very impressive uh, background. Thank you so much. We'll be back. WMTR Radio is nothing but the truth. At the Bianchi Law Group, our team of former prosecutors and certified criminal trial attorneys specialize in criminal defense and domestic violence cases. When you need a law firm with courage, compassion, and the commitment to fight for you, call the Bianchi Law Group today. Welcome back to WMTR Radio's Nothing But the Truth with Bob Bianchi, Dave Bruno. Bashar, uh, let's pick up on that last point. You talked about labeling. Um, I really think that that is an amazing insight uh, everything in your background, but I have two real quick questions for you. The first is when you were receiving that level of uh, bullying, you called it, or even potentially discrimination, there are some people that can go down a rabbit hole of despair and become victims, and there are those who can uh, deal with it and become victors, as they say. How, how did you corner all that? Because you're dealing with everything here. You have to learn a new language, a new tribe of friends, as you put it, and you know, girls and communicating your feelings. How, how did you not go into despair? And I did. And you know, I've realized that I, I've done so over the course of my life whenever tough situations presented themselves. Um, and I, I think that's just being human. Uh, but then it's, it's um, I think you have to just think about what does the other side look like if i you know if you're able to see all the way through you have to ask yourself because at the time i realized that i wasn't the only person experiencing those uh those challenges right there were other people that have come and gone before me that i've experienced the same thing and people after me that will experience similar things but there were other people that i've experienced similar things or worse things and been able to make it through so it's like well what's the difference between me and them and then as I developed, I just became more clear that it's really all psychology, right? And so at the end of the day, you just have to make the decision for yourself. Do I continue through this victim, you know, uh, um, kind of victimhood? And, and where does that really take me? Or do I say, what is this thing? What is the situation uh, teaching me? What could I learn from the situation? And how could I grow? In fact, um, every month I write um, kind of a quote on my whiteboard that I live by for the whole month. And last month it was, thank you life for being difficult because it is through difficulties that we learn and grow. And mm -hmm. now I actually get excited every time a new crisis presents itself in my life. And the bigger the crisis, the more excited I get. Because to me, although I'm feeling like shit during the, the crisis, but I know that on the other side, I'm going to grow a ton as a person. And I just want to, one, one last follow-up, and I know Dave's, we, we, uh, we definitely have to have him back yeah. I mean, if he's willing to, but it's, let's go to that labeling, because you said something that was really interesting to me. I feel in my own life and looking at other people that sometimes we put those shackles of labeling ourselves a certain something because maybe we're uninspired or whatever the reason may be. Um, so you're really saying there that you had to get past your, the labels that other people placed on you that you accept it yourself. Is, is that fair to say? Or is there, was it labels you just created on your own? I'm assuming you guys, uh, well, actually, let me not assume. Do you guys know Tony Robbins? Sure, sure. Yeah. yeah. So I follow him uh, religiously, especially over the last six months. And there is something that he says. He says, we don't experience life. We experience the meaning that we put to life or our life experiences right so it's not the you're not experiencing the 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 events two people can look at the same exact situation and one person say, could you know will be thinking holy shit my life is over the other person could say holy shit this is awesome i'm starting brand new look at all these opportunities right and so it's about the meaning that you're adding to anything right um people could say that you're lazy and then you could take that to heart and then say yes i am lazy uh, anything that I do in my life 
you're going to keep repeating the story or the meaning of I'm lazy, I can't accomplish it. Or you could just simply say, well, sure, maybe I'm lazy. Why is that? You know, what's the meaning here? Well, what, what am I trying? What can I learn from this? Well, for me per personally, it was that I just simply was uninspired. Right. Yeah. And that was the meaning that I got out of it. Now, I didn't I didn't um, I didn't come to that meaning right there and then. But it took me challenging the status quo. It took me challenging the meaning that society was placing on me to see the other side of it. And unfortunately, I feel like a lot of people fail to do that, to go through pain, navigate through pain, rather than just saying, nope, I can't do it anymore, and then just kind of throw the flag and sit. Mm. Wow. Yeah, so you were uninspired, but I would assume that you became inspired right the purpose and we'll get to i think we're speaking the same language here purpose driven what's the purpose that pushes you over the edge from uninspired to inspired yeah you see i get a lot of uh, i get this question a lot people ask me hey what's the best business advice you have you know and usually people are looking for like something tactical they think i'm going to say well you know set up your llc or do this thing and then take this other step but then i come back with something where the first maybe five, ten minutes, they look at me like I'm crazy, and then I think they, they kind of understand after. I always say, be clear on your why. Yeah. The more clear you are on your why, and the bigger your why is, the more inspired or inspiration you will find. Obstacles will happen all the time. Turbulences will happen all the time. I don't care if you're a lawyer, if you're running a podcast, if you're starting an Amazon business, if you're, if you're Jeff Bezos. Obstacles will happen. The thing that will keep you going through obstacles and come out through the other side, it's your why. That's the thing that you're going to be thinking about all the time. So for me, it was being clear on my why, right? When I first came to America, it was, I want to take care of my mom. Um, I want to, I still had a, a family back home that I we, that all of us as a family wanted to bring back to uh, or bring to America. So it was making sure those happen. Several years later, after I lost over half a million dollars in my restaurant business, it was, getting clear of the 150k debt that I left myself with, gaining the respect back of my dad, retiring my parents. 2019, 2020, I had, after I had made a few million dollars and realized that, okay, I've done all these things. Money was a driver for a while. Now what? Now it became, how do I leave the world a better place, which is my personal vision. And so that became my why. And now that this why is just so large that I wake up every single day, regardless, even if the business is crashing and burning, I'm excited because I know this is just a kind of a stepping stone in the whole journey. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. So listen, I, I, you, I know that you made money. I know that you had a problem in your business and then ultimately you overcame that. Can you talk to us a little bit about that experience and what your mindset was in, in getting over those difficulties and now looking at them as positive things? Um, so while going through uh, any any experience, any difficulty in business or in life, it's always, it's always difficult. You know, it's always, uh, you just kind of never know whether or not you can make it, you know, and, and until now, six months ago, I found myself on the ground at a supermarket here having a seizure uh, for the first time in my life. And um, and for the following two, three months, I experienced anxiety like I've never experienced in my life, panic attacks, paralyzed, couldn't even move, couldn't even go anywhere or do anything. And out of that, it put me into this trajectory of self-development that I have never even thought of. I thought I had been, you know, in this self-development journey for the last five, seven, eight years, but the last six months I've probably been developed more as a human than I have in the last decade, right? Because there was leverage created in my life. And this is why you see these like comeback stories. Oftentimes it's, you know, the hero is like, they have their backs against the wall and it's like, you know, they hit rock bottom and then they came out through the other side because there was leverage created. So every time what I've realized is that the bigger leverage is created in my life, I've always been able to come out through the, you know, to the other side and, and really do something much bigger and much larger than I had ever thought of. And so now I'm just thinking about how do I create that leverage without it, without life creating that leverage in my life, right? Without life kind of waking, you know, waking me up to the fact that I need to really create change and slapping me in, in the face, how could I create that leverage? So 
whenever an obstacle happens, it means that there is something new that you've never experienced before and that in order for you to what I was saying is that in order for you to um, to go through an obstacle, whatever the obstacle is happening in your life, the bigger the obstacle, the I guess the the bigger the um, the bigger the person that you have to become in order for you to to tackle the obstacle, right, or to tackle the the opponent, uh, in other words. And so for me, it's always a a, gr a growth opportunity for me every time there is an obstacle, just because it means that I need to become a bigger more developed person because usually problems only mean that you are growing if you are having the same problems it only means that you're not growing and new problems are for me are always good you know okay uh, Bashar if you could tell us uh, what you're doing now how people can find you and uh, what's your your now why so now why is leave the world a better place um, and part of this I am accomplishing through BJK University uh, which it's got a uh, mission impact 1 million lives at a time and uh, what we do is we um, help people through education we're trying to disrupt the education system uh, by providing people the skill they can turn into income within 90 days or less um, so we help them start online businesses uh, currently focuses on Amazon FBA but in the future, we'll be providing uh, more opportunities and more skills. So if anyone watching, they want to follow me or kind of see the journey, they can just go to Instagram and look up Bashar Jika too. And uh, just make sure it's the one with a 2.7, 2.8 million followers because there's like 20 other people trying to be me and scam people. So A lot of cheap imitations out there. Bashar, <laughs> we, we really appreciate it. I'd love to have you back because you, you think uh, in a space that we do, in a heart space and a mind space. But unfortunately, it's all the time that we have right now. This is WMTR Radio's Nothing But The Truth every Saturday. And Dave, uh, you can talk about the podcast. Our guests, Bashar, it's been a pleasure. I enjoy your content and I look forward to continuing to watch you. And thank you for coming on Nothing But The Truth. Take care. Appreciate you. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.